If you weren't there, you missed it. El Pasco is going through change. John Rose, along with other board members, described how El Pasco is changing into an IP-centric organization. So what we're trying to do at El Pasco is make sure that we see the world with the regulators and everybody else to make sure that we are ahead of the curve, that we make sure that we're trying to push the future enough that for our members that we are there and we're relevant and we make sure we can make this transition. High-speed broadband is going to be the wave of the future. It's already here. When we went over to the FCC and took this to them, uh, they had not gone this far. But once we took the plan over there and we've gotten pretty substantial feedback that they are really now thinking about converting the PST into broadband. It's a sunny day in St. Paul after the PR Marketing Symposium just south of here yesterday in Bloomington, Minnesota. The tech track was about peering in an IP world. The word peering is going to cause you immeasurable grief if it's continued to be used in the context of talking about traffic exchange. And here's basically why. Peering occurs between people of like size. Now I want you to sit and think in your mind who is the traffic partner that you exchange the most traffic with? Now, in, in, in TDM today, is that person as big as you? Or are they a little bit like 100,000 times larger? And here's where you have basically the unusual symmetry of interest with competitive carriers. The reality is that the internet is a uh, you know, a barely contained anarchy with respect to um, developing peering relationships and establishing connectivity. And the nice thing about this is it yields a very resilient infrastructure. Now, over the past few years, there has been a marked transition in terms of the relationships that are emerging here. We now see CDN providers establishing direct relationships to the first mile service providers. Home networking is not something for you to be afraid of, but something for you to embrace and turn into money. Uh, there's something in the order of maybe 40 million devices. What we'd like to do, of course, is talk about home entertainment networking, certainly make the case for Mocha. There are certainly plenty of alternatives out there. We do feel um, you should leverage the existing infrastructure. Cable is coax is in 90% of homes. This is Roger. I'm at the PR and Marketing Symposium for Opasco, and we're in Minneapolis area. The big thing that's changing is that the way that you used to reach people is becoming less and less effective. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But one big reason, how many people have a TiVo or a DVR in their house? Yeah, love that thing. And what's the your favorite thing to do with it is fast forward through commercials. $20 billion deleted basically by the fast forward button. Very interesting. Uh, but you want to think about sort of publishing content. You want to think about promoting that content. You want to think about optimizing it so it gets found in search engines more. And then you want to think about how you can have conversion events so that content starts to work for you in terms of generating sales and leads and things like that. But for this side of the room, you know, I feel, and, and the things I'm going to be talking about, specifically about video and what's happening and what we're seeing, but it's really about monetization, okay? And how service providers in this very hyper-competitive environment can bring products and services to market and what your advantages are. My message to this side of the room is we can't ignore the monetization and, profit and profitability piece. It is extremely important as engineers that we understand the motivators behind these in this market. My, my presentation I'm gonna be going through is really a blend of the services and the you know the ability to make money with what actually goes into the network to do it. And a very interesting session on marketing. They started off for phone service about three years ago. Um, they took approximately twenty percent of our access lines in the first year. Others put it even higher at eight to ten times more. And that's ten times more than keeping your current customers. So you're spending a lot of money just to acquire new customers. Again, to keep that bucket full. So if you can keep the ones you have, all the better.